Hello and welcome, I'll see Shim quickly in the hangar and then around the house trying to find out how the Vista or air unit light compares to the new DJI 03 air unit. For the older version I will be using the DJI goggles version 1 with V2 antennas because I will be using the same antennas, the V2 antennas on the DJI V2 goggles not those patches just for Omnis and try to fly the same pass around the house as you see now from this overhead shot through the garage over to the field alongside the cars and then back around the house and then I will overlay you the DJI SRT files which show us the bitrate so without further ado jump into the flight okay first flight will be with the old system one of those regular Caddick air unit antennas Okay, I start here. Oh. It's a dangerous round. Oh, and I don't like the bushes here. Ah, oh, but it works. Okay. Through the garage and over the garage and this is the tricky part for the system not for me flying quite low around over this field here seeing pretty low numbers 21 and quite stuttery I don't like the stutteriness second lap I'll conclude my second lap I'm behind some metal here and coming back behind the house over those bushes and yeah. I will just land at this stage okay swapping out the V2 Stubbies, the original Stubbies. Now on the DJI version 2 goggles. I don't have the DJI goggles 2. Convenient naming. I, I've, I think they're just too expensive for not too much gain. I mean, yeah, the, the small form factor is nice. Maybe the OLED displays are really nice, but the friend, the person, had them and sold them and is happy with his DJI's V2 goggles as well. Of course, the first thing that I notice when looking through the goggle is how much I like the full Betaflight OSD. Finally, I, I skipped the what the fuck OSD, the WTF OSD hack. I mean, I did it on those goggles, but didn't try it the old way because now on the DJI O3s, I I have full Betaflight. I don't have INAV. For me the, the wing season is almost over anyway, so I don't care too much. And the image is considerably darker when it's in the uh, power saver mode. And I've set it to 4x3 in 2.7K60, uh, because I really just like the 4x3 aspect ratio more. So It looks like it is more wide angle on the live, live feed. So where did I? Oh, that was not a good idea to choose this dangerous path here. Then the second or the only other dangerous part are those bushes here. Uh, but I got it. Yeah, the low light is not great. You will see comparison for me. But let me concentrate on the garage part, okay? It was a bit dark. Now over to the field. Yeah, and it's very smooth. Going low over. Maybe I was a bit higher than with the Vistas, but I will try to keep low. Now it's a bit stuttery on 23 ambits in the worst case. Yeah, we will see it on the analysis of the SRT files for sure. And it's also a bit stuttery back there. Past the cars. If I have to, I will change the speeds accordingly to have side-by-side -side comparison good. 
I would push. Yeah, it's considerably darker than the normal air unit Vista light. Okay, that was already the flight. Yay, and I see the statues. <laughs> I didn't fly analog for so long. Totally forgot how awesome it is to have end screen stats. Like, my maximum altitude was 10 meters. <laughs> I will analyze the SRT files now. For you it's seconds, for me it's some work. So if you want to support my work, leave a thumbs, a subscription. Or even consider heading over to my Patreon page. Where, for example, you would have seen lots of the infos that I collected for this video. Uh, weeks before the public sees it. <laughs> Thanks to all my patrons. They're awesome. And if you subscribe, you will also learn ND filters. In sunny days, ND filters, I think they are quite important. But being not so good in low light, you have to be careful when you really use the ND filters. Stay tuned for the full video on ND filters. Okay, now to the comparison. On the left, O3, on the right, the Vista. What I noticed the first is um, take a look at the stability of the bitrate. On the O3, it stays pretty consistent on 50, whereas on the Vista, it jumps up and down. So it's not as stable. The latency is higher on the O3 because it was in the 60 frames mode and not in the 120 frames low latency mode. But yeah, I didn't want to use 120 frames when the low light capabilities are limited anyways. This is where the interesting part begins. Behind a lot of building material and doing my two laps. The O3 goes down quite low as well. But it stays more consistent and yeah. On the really low bits, the Vista image looks considerably worse. And here the texture of the asphalt is just better on the O3 than on the Vista. Trees here are darker on the O3. Overall, the image is much nicer and clearer on the Vista. Much nicer is, is the wrong word, but it's just yeah, easier to fly with. At this moment, maybe we can tweak it with exposure value increase. Let's see. This is what I meant with the low bit rates. Look at the right side, the Vista, how blocky it can get with low bit rate. And the O3 just stays. Yeah. It uses H265 codec, and this only needs half of the bit rate to look decent. So we could even get away with 25 Mbit. Check out this wood example here. I flew it in last year with the Vista here as well. And although I had probably better antennas on the Vista than the Omnis on the O3, we see a similar bitrate, a bit less bitrate on the O3, of course. But the O3 handles it, the details really, really good. So you see no blocking, no artifacting. Now look at the Vista, how blocky it is in comparison to the O3 with comparable bitrate. Once more, some penetration testing, flying into this woody road here, like two or 300 meters away from me. But you will see the cool thing about the setup at the end of this road. You can just concentrate on the bitrate, which is yeah, now at the 30s. A lot of details, branches, but not really too much blockiness. And quite smooth, so it doesn't stutter. It is consistent. So I could really fly this confident here. Now we're in the 50 because I'm quite near. Soon this building will be in the way as well, so the bitrate will go down a bit more. Yeah, like 40. And this is the cool thing I said in my car because it was really, really cold. So I sat in the Faraday cage and got decent results with Omni antennas. Here, orange is the bitrate, blue is the latency. On the left side, the O3 shows 
way more consistent curve of the bitrate. So it stays at the same value much longer or much more consistent. Whereas the Vista jumps up and down between 50 and 40 in the good regions as well. The latency is of course a bit higher because I used the 60 frames, not the 120 frames mode on the O3. But even the latency, and that's the important part, the latency is more consistent around the same numbers. Blue O3 and the green the Vista. And here you see it very, very good that the green is very jumpy, the bitrate. And in the extreme situations, Vista might go down further, all the way to like 7 Mbit, but that might be a variation in my flying. Overall, you have to keep in mind that the O3 can get way better image with the same amount of RF. I scaled those two 4x3 images up with the same number, so you see there's not a lot of resolution increase, but you see it's too dark on the left side to yeah, to really confidently fly into such dark areas. Yeah, you can play this back and forth and examine it for yourself. But I felt a bit uncomfortable flying with it. And here the onboard recording with some flippity floppities around the house. This is what's supposed to replace your GoPro or DJI Action 2. This can save me minimum 50 grams of weight on my copter. Uh, and I'm I'm totally happy with the quality. This is only 2.7k in 60 frames because I wanted to use the 4x3 mode. But here yeah, I'm, I'm fine with the quality. The rock steady stabilization looks nice to me. So no weird shakes. You can go over it with gyro flow as well. Yeah, and it gives you decent results. So this is a compromise cam. Uh, the HD recording looks really nice. The live video is a bit of a compromise because of the light handling. Maybe they can fix it in firmware and make it better. Or maybe Runcam Cadix makes better cam lens modules that are then better at flying, but worse again in the onboard recordings. We will see. That's the cam module sitting up there, just like a GoPro. The lens is a bit too thick to have a good view between most frames standoffs. The lens module is connected by this wide connector that seems to be the same as on the previous air units. On the air unit I like the new bracket. Looks like it's easier to be screwed in place like on the Vistas. Here is a storage card. On the back we again have a bracket, a screw-in-place bracket with some UFL connectors, two antennas going into one, one case. On the Vistas you had to solder on the connectors to the flight control and power source. On the full-size air unit you always had this connector. Now we have a smaller one. And I'm kind of proud of my first self-designed 3D printed mount. Yes, I got an Ender 3S Pro from a good friend. Thanks for that. If you really want, you can download this STL file, but this is yeah designed for the Sector 5. Yeah, but you can remix it and, and make something similar for your frame. Okay, so that's all for the video today. Thanks a lot for watching. Hope you liked it. Leave me your thoughts and your comments down below. And give me some suggestions what the next video about the O3 A unit should have. I can't do my usual antenna tests, but somehow I have the feeling that if you get that amount of range with stock antennas on the older goggles, you don't need to care about range that much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye for now.